Elon Musk laid out his plans to cut jobs at the company. We grew very fast with, on, the, on the salaried side, and so it requires a reduction in salaried workforce. They've been moving staff out of that facility in San Mateo to the Palo Alto office in some cases, but my understanding is that that facility is now completely shuttered. Remember how many people have left Wall Street to join these firms. So it does start to put pressure not just on the market itself, but also on the job market here after you've seen yep. so much competitive pressure. Over the last couple of weeks, over 10,000 employees have lost their job in tech. Things aren't looking too good. What is up everyone? Welcome to the channel, welcome to another video. I am off angle, let me fix myself real quick. Everyone, my name is Chris Sean and I have been in tech for a couple of years. I've been here for over half a decade. I'm actually in the heart of San Francisco right now because I'm here for the Databricks Data and I Summit here in June. Anyway, the last couple of weeks have been really interesting. I tweeted something, not sending out a tweet, but I tweeted something on Twitter asking people thinking, will the tech bubble burst? Has it already bursted? What's going on? I even tweeted something out asking, what should we learn from the most recent mass layoffs that are happening in tech? What am I talking about? Coinbase laid off 18 percent of their employees, which I believe is about a thousand employees, 1100 employees. Now Tesla, a very large company with over a hundred thousand employees laid off 10% of their employees and 10% is about 10,000 of them. And as of, I think this week or was it last week, Netflix laid off 300 more employees in another company. And this is the second round of layoffs. It's scary. It's scary times. I have a friend who has a friend who worked at Netflix making the big bucks, right? This person decided to leave Netflix for Coinbase. They received an offer for Coinbase, they accepted the offer, and just like everyone else, just like me, when I receive a new offer, when I leave my last tech job for a new tech job, I take one or two months off. Well, while waiting to start that new job, this person's job offer at Coinbase eventually got rescinded. That sucks. It really does. And that doesn't happen a lot. It hasn't happened to me, but I don't think that happens a lot, but it's been happening recently. If you go all over blind, teamblind.com, you see all these people talking about the offers from Coinbase getting rescinded, right? It, it, it's unfortunate. And the reason I want to talk about this right now is because a lot of y'all are watching my channel who are aspiring developers trying to get into tech as a software engineer, as a front-end developer, back-end developer, you name it. It's scary times, I'm not gonna lie. When I see it, I, I start wondering and just thinking, I'm, I'm so glad that I never fully committed to a company like Coinbase. Coinbase reached out to me about a senior developer relations engineer position at Coinbase and they were going to pay up to $380,000 a year. I'm very thankful that I didn't join Coinbase. Imagine, I work for such a good company right now. The culture is amazing. I've never found a company that has the culture it has here at Airbyte. I get to work with my good friend, Justin Chow Codes. I have a great manager who I genuinely believe is one of the best DevRel people out there. I mean, I'm learning so much more than any other job I've ever been at in regards to developer relations. I love it. I'm really thankful that I actually became content with my position, with my current pay. Yeah, my pay at my new job would have been 150K to $200,000 or more, but I'm very glad that I learned to be content because imagine if I just kept chasing that money. I kept chasing that dollar in the, in the world of inflation, right? I kept chasing that dollar, kept chasing that dollar. I'd be jobless right now. <laughs> so I'm very thankful that I'm happy. I made a, a, the right decision for once. I think I've been making the right decision. Anyway, what people want to know is what, what What about you? What about me? What, what about aspiring developers who are trying to get in tech? What about junior developers who are working in tech right now? Should they change their minds? Should they try to pursue a different career? No. Not at all. I think one thing we need to understand is why these layoffs are happening. Now, I did a little bit of research. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, please. But Coinbase, before they laid off 18% of their company, they started, I believe, an NFT program or something like that. Maybe it was a marketplace. They're expecting a certain amount of sales and they weren't even near, nearly close to that, right? They were way below their goals of what they were expecting of what's going to happen. And because of that, just like every other company that has millions and billions of dollars out there, they overhired. Now they have to let people go up because that money isn't coming in. When it came to Tesla, this is crazy. I read this in the article, I don't remember where, but 
literally, this could be wrong. I could be wrong. Allegedly, from what I read, Elon Musk, who is the founder CEO of SpaceX, Tesla, Boring Company, you name it. He said that he just has a fear of what's going to happen in this upcoming recession, and he was trying to prepare for that. So it's not exactly that Tesla was doing bad, that they're not doing well, but people were laid off simply because the CEO of a company was worried about something that might happen. Of course, he had to do that because he wants to protect his company, protect his asset, but I think what this needs to do for everyone out there is to help people come to the realization that there is a dark side of tech out there. Yeah, we make hella money. Yeah, we have opportunities everywhere, you name it. And yeah, just like every other company out there, you have a chance of getting laid off, but we're not protected from that. We're not any safer than anyone else. It's sad. The fact that over 10,000 employees at Tesla, I had a homie who worked there and he got laid off. He was an engineer. He was a mechanical engineer. He's been there for what, seven years, eight years? Laid off like that. Why? Because the CEO of that company was worried about something. And I think that's when we all need to come to the realization that yeah, tech is amazing. We have so many freaking opportunities, but we need to be ready. Be ready for the next opportunity. Be ready to make sure that we have three to six months of savings, of emergency fund. Because three months is already more than enough to get for a developer to get a new job. Six months just kinda lowers the anxiety a little bit, right? I think more than anything else, one thing that I, I, I've already noticed because I was laid off from Entrepreneur Magazine, right? They laid me off like that. Making sure that you are always honing your skills. You don't remain comfortable. You continue learning. I joined Airbyte. I'm a front-end developer, but what I do with Airbyte is back-end development. I work mainly with Python, work with Postgres database, working with query languages rather than JavaScript, working with AWS, working with BigQuery, you name it, Snowflake, data warehouses, learning what ETL is, learning what ELT is, right? Learning data engineering in general. And I had, I, I, I've only been in this for six months and I still have so much more to learn. I can't allow myself to be lazy as hell because I make good money and be comfortable and not continue learning. Now that I'm moving to the data engineering world, I need to continue learning how to be better at Docker, um, being better at just like using tools like DBT and transforming data, being better at just being more comfortable in how to work with warehouses, ELT in general, right? Moving data, et cetera, you name it. I need to be a better data engineer. I've been a JavaScript developer for five to six years. And now I'm learning something totally new. As happy as I am right now, as comfortable as I am right now, my company. Again, I'm thankful I joined a startup that has a lot of money right now. <laughs> so I feel very, very safe. You never know. You really never know. And so for those of you who are still aspiring to get in tech, who are not in tech yet, or just got into it, this is why we get paid so well. We never stop learning. We continually have to continue to improve ourselves. The people who are always laid off at companies are tend to be the people who, unfortunately, were at the you could say bottom of the barrel in regards to what value they bring to the company, right? The second round of employees are let go are not technically the people who were who brought the least amount of value, but they brought more value than the first round of layoffs, right? The people who are laid off at the first round of layoffs. Your goal, even before getting in tech, and when you get in tech, is to make sure you could become the best of the best. If there was a round of layoffs that do happen, you're not part of it. But when you see a lot of layoffs happening, there's a lower chance of you being laid off, you can start looking for new jobs. It's not like now you have only three to six months of savings and you have to find a new job. You don't even have to worry about that, right? So anyway, this is crazy. It, it is scary. But to be honest, I'm not that worried. So what I'm trying to say is, am I worried? Yes, no. You never know what can happen to you. I mean, I work in a startup, you never know what can happen. But that's also why I work very hard to make sure at least in what I do, what I can contribute to a company, I do the best I literally can. But no, I'm not worried. If something happens, I can get a job in a couple months, right? I have savings. I have savings that last me uh, nine months to a year. I mean, yeah, so I have YouTube. I can do YouTube full time if I really, really wanted to. Tie my side hustle. So no, I'm not worried, but I'm also prepared. Don't give up. Tech is life changing. Do your best to be the best. You can do it. Anyway, this is a random video. I did have a script for this. I actually wrote a blog post on this. I'll put the link in the description below. And you'll notice the blog post isn't even related to what I just talked about in this video. I had a script. I'm not using it. You know, someone said I was using a script. Like, literally. All right, there's a mess in my room. There's literally no script. Nothing. Do you see a script? I don't see a script. All right, I'm going crazy right now. And I am in San Francisco. I'm here for a conference. I'll be at Databricks. I'll see y'all there. Thank you for watching. This is Krishan. This is the life of a developer advocate. And I'll see y'all in the next video. Peace out.